is the perfect RIA In case you didn't know Bringing you all the strategies To help your business grow Are you happy? Are you satisfied? Are you hanging on the edge of your seat? Sit back and listen in While you feel the beat, yeah Another myth bites the dust Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Follow Up Friday, where we look back on Monday's episode to make sure that you've taken action because really action is all that counts in not just this episode, but in everything in life. And of course, on Monday, we talked about dealing with those clients, or we'll, we'll use the term clients loosely, those people on your books who don't meet your definition of an ideal client. And we gave you the assignment, uh, several assignments, but the first assignment was to make a list of all your clients and identify the exceptions, hopefully it's a handful, but for some of you it's a lot, of people who are not a good fit, who either need to have that relationship reset or need to be graduated to another option. Absolutely. Now, if you have not gone and taken that action, you know what? The next thing you need to do is you were avoiding this in some in some reason because this isn't that big of an exercise. You should have been able to accomplish it this week. You need a mastermind in a team environment in order to help with this. And I got to say masterminds, and, and I'm not trying to be too biased in, uh, in this. You don't want to use ours. Perfect. Go get your own. We have a great template. We've done podcasts on it. Just follow that template. You know, Do what works. Uh, rule number one is success. Uh, and that is a really great thing to do. And masterminds are a really great way to keep you accountable to get this done. But Jarvis, we got a couple of comments that kind of comes in when we talk about this that I really wanted to address. And one of them comes up, this is great. If you have someone who is outside, let's say we we gave you five exceptions last uh, this week. So if you have those five exceptions, you have all of a sudden number six, number one, how do you choose which one you're going to fire or graduate? And what actually happens with that? I mean, how do you have that conversation? I mean, what does that actually look like? Oof. Well, it, it, at first it looks like a lot of head trash and a lot of like, oh man, if I fire this client, every other client's going to leave with them and my yep. whole world's going to collapse and I'll shortly be homeless, right? By the way, this is the head trash I have when I'm raising fees. So it's there. That's real. Uh, you need to do some fear setting around that. But the actual graduating the client itself, and there's lots of resources inside of Invictus in the Backstage Pass. We've done podcast episodes on it. But it looks like being authentic with that client saying, hey, listen, I'm just not a good fit for what you need. And here are the options that I recommend. Option number one, Vanguard has a great service, dial a CFP. Option number two, there's an advisor I know down the road that I think will take good care of you. Option number three, if applicable to what you've decided to do for your practice, once a month I do a pro bono financial planning day with a local library and you can come on down there anytime you want and I'll be glad to help you there. So we're we're just painting out, here's your three options. Uh, go in peace. You know, Jarvis, one of the things that I often say um, when, when this is going to come up to clients that that want to onboard with us but aren't our ideal clients is saying, look, my fee would be detrimental to your success. You know, and so I, I can't in good conscience do that. Um, this is our fee um, based on where you guys are at. This would actually hurt your overall financial planning. Therefore, I think the best option would be A, B, and C and point them to another direction. And, and for me, that's worked out quite well. You know, uh, another thing uh, as we're going through this is uh, that comes up, what if the team wants to graduate somebody, uh, but you don't want to? What if the team all of a sudden comes out and says they want to graduate your top client? Because one of the exercises on Monday was what ha- you should give this list to your team. And if your team goes through it and says, you know what, all of a sudden this top client is taking so much time and they're a giant pain in the butt, what do you do? Well, if you have a top client that's bringing in a sh- uh, tons of revenue, one of the things that we've done in the past, if they're a, P- a PIA pain in the rear end client, is easy to come back and say, you know what, team, I I definitely want to do this. We can absolutely graduate that top client. But before we do that, we need to replace them, right? So let's put it on the books of saying, all right, they're not the ideal client. Yes, we're going to graduate them. I want to bring on one more client like them. And as soon as we do that, then we're going to graduate them. So easy ways to to deal with that head trash. Again, this is for a top client that's bringing in substantial in the top 10 of your revenue. You know, if it's 99 out of 100 clients bringing in revenue, this isn't the same thing. Those need to be graduated sooner. But we absolutely understand understand that issue of saying, hey, I got a top client revenue wise who's a pain in the butt. How do I make up that difference? Yeah, I think we talked about that in a prior episode at one point, but I had a top 10 client that we had to graduate because the, the team dreaded when this client would walk in the parking lot, this client would call, they would they would say, oh, it's an absolute nightmare to have this person on board. Uh, but the team was also very hesitant saying, hey, we know that this client brings on a lot of revenue. Okay, perfect. Well, we can't have this toxicity in our workplace. We can't have somebody who's abusive to the team. And so we made the tough call. It's a great, uh, we're graduating this client and here's the graduation. And and that client actually was very upset. In fact, I was nervous we were going to get a complaint on that one. Uh, We handled it as best we could and did not come into a complaint. But she was very, very, very angry when that happened. So you do need to proceed with caution, but don't let that stop you. 
if they got that angry getting graduated, at some point that's a time bomb that's yes. going to go off for you. Uh, yeah, I was going to say you're you're making it worse by holding on to it, right? You got a lit grenade in, in your hand and you're saying, well, the longer I hold on to it, the better this is going to be for me. No, the better thing to do is to chuck that thing uh, and get rid of it and just deal with the, the outcome. Michael, one other place that comes up, and I'll just be real brief on this one, is any clients that are not following your advice, specifically when it comes to spending. So as you know, we follow the guardrail approach very closely. If I have a client that consistently wants to go out of the guardrails, we are immediately graduating that client because I cannot be the captain of a sinking ship. I don't want to be there when they run out of money because the thing's going to blow up and the gun's going to get pointed at me. So uh, clients who don't follow advice, that's a whole other episode. Those people have to be graduated. Yeah, and actually have one of those conversations coming up in October that we're going to do. So yeah, we can do a podcast around that one. Uh, one of the other things to say, because I know in these Friday episodes, we want to make sure that we keep them uh, good, nice, and brief for you. But one of the things we didn't get into in the last episode was a fear-setting exercise. And I got to say, this is going to be really, really huge. Tim Ferriss has great stuff on fear-setting. And really, this is getting used to being uncomfortable. And if you want to be successful, be used to being uncomfortable. Be comfortable being uncomfortable. Um, and do this with different fear setting exercises. So you can, because it's so much head trash that holds us back from our success and what fear setting and being uncomfortable on a consistent basis does is it pushes that, that head trash further and further out. Doesn't remove it. At least I haven't found anyone that has removed it for, but at least pushes it further and further out that allows us to grow more. Yeah, that's an interesting point, Mike. A lot of times we think, oh, when I, when I feel good about this decision, then I'll take it. And it's one thing about feeling good, like, hey, I've made my decisions. I followed a good process. The other is if you're waiting until something's going to be comfortable, the only thing that's going to be comfortable is sit on the couch watching Netflix. And guess what? No top advisor got there by sitting on the couch watching Netflix. So I don't know that I'm ever comfortable with being uncomfortable, but I've just accepted, like, if I want to achieve success in any element of life, my practice, my physical fitness, my family relationships, all of that's going to require discomfort. And uh, you have to do what has to be done. Yeah, it's a good point. I don't know if I've been comfortable being uncomfortable, but I'm not comfortable when I'm not uncomfortable, uh, right? <laughs> so if, I, if I'm not doing things that are pushing the envelope, mm -hmm. I'm sitting here saying, wait, something's wrong, yeah. right? Now all of a sudden I know something's wrong and there's something for me to address uh, that I, I need to bring it up to master, mastermind group, right? I need to text you on it. I need to say, hey, you know, I need to push this envelope somewhere because I'm getting too comfortable. That's right. right? To use a workout analogy, right? if I'm not breaking a sweat, if my heart rate's not coming up, I'm not actually doing anything, right? The, the, the blow your training heart rate's not doing you any good. Uh, you've got to be in that zone where you're sweating, right? Whether that's physically for a physical thing or just sort of emotionally, mentally for these bigger things. Awesome. So podcast is all about action items. Make sure you go back. If you didn't listen to Monday episode, go through and do it because we went through a ton of great action items that you need to do uh, and really bring your team involved in this process as well. This is a journey for all of you to go through. Of course, you're going to lead it, but listen to them, talk about those clients, find out those exceptions, because what you're trying to do is build your perfect practice. And until next time, happy planning. Happy planning. Hold on before we go. Something that you need to know This isn't tax, legal, or investment advice That isn't our intent Information designed to change lives Financial planning can make you thrive Start today, don't think twice Be a better husband, father, mother, and wife The perfect RIA